Your physiological strength in many ways is the foundation for your psychological balance. I think food and toilet more, both must be far away. Then you will keep your physiology in a conscious condition. Just because I'm laughing and joking about this, don't think there is no problem. There is substantial problem. Sadhguru, during the lockdown, we have gained a lot of weight from overeating and no physical activity. Can you offer us some simple weight loss tips, please? I was in Chennai a few years ago, and I was talking to some of the business community in Chennai. Uh, they were not particularly obese or something, but little trying to imitate the planet. Not by being on a spin, in form, I mean. So I said, uh, you know, as a generation of people, Look at your condition. If I had come to Chennai fifty years ago or hundred years ago, in what physical form people would be, in what level of physical fitness they would be, ordinary people I'm talking about, I'm not talking about gymnasts, sports persons, not those kind of people, ordinary people on the street. Or even now, in what kind of physical strength and condition people are, in a, in rural India, for example, I said, see, suppose it so happened, you were walking on the street and you saw a tiger, a wild tiger, hungry one. How many of you can at least climb a tree? And this is a spectacular show, a tiger on a Chennai street. This is not an everyday happening, it is something you must enjoy. <laughs> But how many of you can climb a tree, which is the… the trunk of it, usually the city trees, uh, what is on the avenues and stuff, is not more than eight to twelve feet. How many of you can climb this eight to twelve feet and sit on a branch and enjoy the wildlife view? No. Only those guys who are doing the menial jobs, the guy who is sweeping, the street, maybe he will go sit on the tree and watch how wonderful a breakfast you are. Why have you become like this? It's not the tiger is… Oh, where is the tiger going to come? That's not the point. Why are you in this condition that you cannot do anything physically anymore? All you can go to office and come back. Those things are also necessary in today's world, but is it not important that you are in some way physically competent? Physical competence is a reflection of your physiological strength. And your physiological strength in many ways is the foundation for your psychological balance. It is no more in question. Your physiological strength is the foundation for your psychological balance in many, many ways. We've always been saying this, the yoga… yogic sciences, but people have been laughing at it because everything is keyhole. People say brain is a separate study. That's why yesterday I confessed with all the neuro uh, experts, see I don't have a brain. At least most of the time it's not working. I keep it off. There is enough from… from the tips of my hair to my toes. There is enough cells with enough memory and intelligence, they will do my life. I have uh, disciplined them nicely. They will do my life the way I want. Because a large part of day-to-day -day work and day-to-day -day, uh, functioning is… is just a repeat work. All you need is a clerk, you don't need a super brilliant person to do all these things. So I've trained them and they do their work. 
I don't have to think how to eat, how to sit, how to stand, how to breathe, nonsense. Uh, it just happens by itself because a very stable and effervescent physiological condition is very, very important to have a certain level of psychological freedom. Otherwise, every little thing you do, you have to think. Once you think, inevitably you are confused about every damn thing that you do. Now, you are talking about because... because of virus you ate too much. This is not because of virus you're eating too much. Uh, this is... this is a, a kind of a compensatory activity that, you know, uh, you will see this in the cinema theaters and everything. If you have nothing to do, never before in the history of humanity was food simply available like this all the time. It's a wrong thing that everywhere you walk there is food. It should not be. I see some of the corporations in America are organizing like this. Food and toilet should always be within whatever fifty feet or hundred feet something they have fixed, fifty feet I think. Within fifty feet of wherever you are, there must always be food and that food is usually one month old of course. And there is a toilet. No, I think food and toilet, more, both must be far away, then you will keep your physiology in a conscious condition. Everywhere there is toilet, it's not good because body has certain resilience. You wanting to run to the toilet is not just physiological, sometimes it may be when the body, at some time it's disturbed, at that time it may be, otherwise in normal conditions, it is more a psychological condition than a physiological condition. That all the time you want to message, not because you have something very significant to say, it is simply because it's a release. Similarly, going to the toilet is a release, sexuality is a release, wherever, whenever, whatever, all the time the same things because you are building up nonsense within yourself all the time, you need a release, all the time release. These things are being openly talked about as part of psychiatry, that you must find release. Why are you pent up? I think in one of the interviews, some uh, journalist was asking me, Sadhguru, what do you do to unwind yourself? I said, what? Why will I wind myself up, first of all? <laughs> I don't wind myself up and then want to unwind somewhere. What are you? Are you a grandfather clock or something? You wind yourself up. Even the club watch doesn't need any winding anymore, it runs by itself. Why are you winding yourself up? This is simply because you understand life as an accumulation. Yes, body is an accumulation, mind is an accumulation, but life is not an accumulation, it's a phenomena that's happening. If you have not tasted that phenomena, you know only accumulations, you always think the safety is in accumulation, whether it's wealth, money, this, that and body. But at least your money you can keep it in the bank, though it's, it may be heavy in your mind. But if you accumulate too much body, you have to carry it around every moment of your life. And uh, in the world today, in the world today, thirty percent of the population is malnourished. And around the same percentage of people are obese, overweight. See, you can fix it. The world's problems of malnourishment, you can fix it. So, uh, this practice is there in the Isha Yoga Center. Whenever a uh, cause comes up, when Isha Vidya, you know, educating rural children, raising funds for it became a problem, then many people in the yoga center took this up, 
on Wednesday evenings I won't have dinner and let that money go to the children. I think you must find seven causes like this. I can give you seven <laughs> Monday for Rally for Rivers, Tuesday for Kaveri Calling, Wednesday for Isha Vidya, Thursday is called Guruvar, this is for your Sadhguru. Friday for Devi, because that's her day. Saturday, you have your dinner, I'm reducing one day. Sunday, for Janalinga. Like this you find seven or at least six causes, where six dinners you give away, morning you eat, all right? Ten o'clock in the morning you eat well, and again eat ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, and also, because you need to keep social distancing, drive out of the town, and walk back, get into your bus, take a… buy a ticket for uh, ten kilometers away and just walk back. Best you go without your phone or on, and your wallet, so that you have to walk back. Do something, come on. <laughs> Already there is one problem, you want to multiply your problems, huh? You want to increase the size of your problem, don't do that. There's enough problem already. I'm telling you there's substantial problem. Just because I'm laughing and joking about this, don't think there is no problem. There is substantial problem. Don't fool yourself because if your body and your mind is in a certain condition, you can easily fool yourself. This happened. Shankaran Pillai was running a garment shop here in United States. And a lady came to buy some kind of a pullover. So, uh, he promised her it is one hundred percent wool. She took it, went home, the next day she came back and she said, you said it's one hundred percent wool, but here the label says it is made in Bangladesh and it's one hundred percent cotton. He said, ma'am, don't you be fooled by this, the label is only to fool the moths. <laughs> like this, there are so many labels all over the world, don't go by that. You… this is a simple experiment you must do, all of you who are sitting now on the floor, when you get up, you must use only two limbs to stand up. All of you, in your life you must keep this up however old you are. This is a simple test for you, you sit down cross-legged and when you want to stand up, you use only two limbs. That means you don't do four-wheel drive. Just get up with your legs. This much fitness at least you must manage. If you can't climb a tree, there are not enough tigers to, you know, for them to roam in your city. If you can't climb a tree, it's okay, but at least you must be able to stand up. This much fitness you must maintain. Please do that for yourself.